In the previous video, we learned about attribute binding. In this video, let's continue with attribute binding, but focus on one specific attribute, which is the class attribute. Let's start off with the class attribute in its most basic form. In the style section, we need to define a new class. The class name is underline, and we simply set text decoration to underline. In the markup section, I'm going to add an h2 tag with the text as underlined text. To apply the underline class we have just defined, we specify the class attribute and then assign the class name. If we take a look at the browser, the class and its styling is applied on the HTML element. Now this is an example of a static class. Static classes are the ones that never change and will always be present on the HTML element. But in a web application, you might want to manipulate an element's list of classes. In other words, you need dynamic classes, which allows you to add or remove classes when things change in your application. Now, dynamic classes are similar to static classes, but we have to use curly braces in order to bind a JavaScript expression to our class attribute. Let's understand with an example. I'm going to begin by adding two new classes. Danger, where the color is red, and success, where the color is olive. In the script section, let me define a new constant called status and set it to danger. Now, in the markup section, we can bind this status value to the class attribute using curly braces. So h2 tag, the text is status and class is equal to within curly braces, status. If we now go back to the browser, we can see the status text with red color. If I inspect the element, you can see danger is applied as a class, which is the value of the status property. Change it to success and the success class is applied. This sort of a class binding allows you to change the class dynamically based on some data. For example, if there are errors in a form field, you might want to apply the danger class. If there is valid data in the form, you might want to apply the success class. So this is pretty much the basics of binding classes in Svelte. However, there is more to it. Since the class attribute accepts any JavaScript expression, we can do some pretty cool things like conditional binding. So in the style section, let me define another class. I'm going to take the context of displaying movie names. If the movie is a promoted movie, we want the font style to be italicized. We can now add a new constant called is promoted that serves as the condition for the promoted class to be applied. Now in the markup, we can use the ternary operator to conditionally apply the promoted class only if is promoted is true. So h2 tag again, the text is going to be movie title and then class binding. Now within the curly braces, we're going to specify if is promoted is true, apply the promoted class, if not, don't apply it. If you take a look at the browser, you can see that the text movie title is italicized and the promoted class is applied on the h2 element. If I change is promoted to false, the class and the styling is removed from the element. This pattern of conditionally applying classes is so common that Svelte provides a special directive that allows you to toggle classes based on some condition. 
Now a directive is like a custom attribute that controls the element's behavior in some way. In our case, it controls the toggling of classes on an element. So instead of class is promoted, we can have the directive class colon and the class name we want to apply which is promoted. And this should be applied based on the value of is promoted. So what happens here is that the JavaScript expression is promoted is evaluated first. If it is true, promoted is applied as a class on the element, else it is not. If I set is promoted to true again and go back to the browser, you can see the promoted class being applied and the text is italicized. Of course, this class directive also has a shorthand syntax. If the directive class name and its value match, we can concise this line of code. So if our constant is just promoted instead of is promoted, we can completely remove the equals sign and the right hand side. So class colon promoted. Head back to the browser and our class binding works as expected. So this pretty much is about binding classes and conditionally binding classes in Svelte. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.